Okay, I'm going to I'm going to go on. So this is there's no exercises for this, but I just wanted to note there's a function in SymPy if you have a string of something that you want to convert to an expression. So like x plus 1 plus sine of pi. There's a function called simplify. Not to be confused with simplify. This is a uh, Simplify con converts something into a SymPy expression. And so if I put something in there, it'll convert this string into a SymPy. And you can see it, sine of pi equals zero, so it, that already went away. And uh, just a, a heads up before uh, you go out and, and write the next big web app that uses Simplify to take user input and do SymPy with it. Simplify uses eval, so you don't use it on unsanitized input. Symbol? Well, I mean, you can also. I mean, a symbol is a special case of a string, so you can use it to create a, a symbol. But you shouldn't because um, if you accidentally put something else in there, you know, if you, if you, if you did something like this, Oh, that, that actually works. <laughs> That's a syntax error, right? You know, if I wanted to create some symbol, symbols can create, can contain any character that you want. I mean, you can create, and you know, there's always a chance that you'll mistype something and you'll end up getting, also the other thing with symbols, it makes it really easy to create multiple symbols at once. You just use this X, Y, Z. If you do simplify, again, this, it doesn't know what this is. It only parses expressions that are valid expressions. And another, th actually a nice thing about symbols, let me show you. So if you want to create a lot of symbols, like say I want to create a um, symbol for every letter of the alphabet. There's this nice shorthand. I can do A colon Z, and that'll create every symbol. And if I want to create numbered symbols, yes? No, symbols does not inject into the namespace. Oh, sorry. The question is, does it put this into the local namespace? And the answer is no. So if I type like H here, H is not defined. So the var the VAR, VAR function, that injects into the namespace. So if you want to quickly you know, define all symbols in your namespace, you can use VAR here instead of symbols. Um, I'm not going to use VAR in this tutorial because uh, it's, uh, then I won't know what I have defined. And another way is if you want to create numbered symbols. So I can do X zero to 10. This works like a range, so I don't. I can actually emit the zero too, and I can create from five to ten. So if I want to create a bunch of symbol numbered symbols at once, it's really easy to do. Okay, and now we get to um, numerical evaluation. So SymPy uses uh, MPMath to do arbitrary precision numerics. And the way you do that is, this, is eval f. So if I want to know what pi is, so pi by default is just pi. And you, you saw, you know, if we do sine of pi, this actually is pi, sine of pi equals zero. And if I want to know what pi actually is as a decimal, I could just do pi dot eval f here. And by default, EvalF uses 15 digits of precision. But as I said, it's arbitrary precision. So if I want to know what the first 100 digits of pi are, then I just do EvalF 100. And if I want to know what the first 1,000 digits are, then here's the first 1,000 digits of pi. And if I have like an expression, pi plus x plus cosine. I can eval f an expression, 
and that will evaluate all the, the um, numerical constants in the expression into floating point numbers. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything on there. Oh, and one more point. If you want to actually evaluate something, if you wanted to use subs to um, evaluate something at a floating point, it's actually better if you use the subs argument. Oh, let me put it in a new cell. X. So let's say I want to set X equal to uh, 2.4. So I could have... So these are, these are basically the same thing here, but the, the difference is that if I want to do, let's not do that many digits. <laughs> here you can see these are different. After the default precision, it starts being different. So if you use the subs option to eval F, it intelligently, it uses the precision everywhere. Here we're putting 2.4 in, and then we're doing eval F100, so it's not um, using the correct precision <coughs> on 2.4. So it was eval F change the expression? No. So, so what is he, he asked if eval F changes the expression. So I mentioned this earlier. Simpy expressions are immutable, so nothing will ever change them in place. Any operation you do will always return a new expression. And there's one, there's one exception to that, which we might get to today, and those are the matrices. Matrices actually are mutable. But other than that, SymPy expressions are completely immutable. So whenever you, whenever you do these methods or these functions, you're getting new objects back, and it's not changing the original expression. OK, and you should be able to do uh, um, the EvalF exercises now. which are down here. And so this one, this one is a little more challenging, I guess. So <coughs> I'll give you a little bit of time to do it. And I'm going to go grab some more water. We use point thirteen point two. Yeah, let me actually just say that here. So there is also this module ABC, which contains single letter variable names, uh, like uh, R, W, 
19. So now I can do, you can import single letter variable names from this module, but it's, it's kind of not recommended because it doesn't contain anything else. And if you do from simpy.abc import star, as we just saw, it clobbers some names. So now pi is no longer the number pi. Pi is just a symbol called pi. So ABC, ABC contains all uppercase and lowercase Latin letters and all Greek letters. Including two letter so how many no, 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 it's because pi is a Greek letter. So it, con it, contains, uh, it contains Greek letters like zeta, beta. Gotcha. But other than that, so don't do this. Oh, and I just did it. <laughs> so yeah, there are about seven different ways you can create symbols. We've already seen maybe five of them. Um, but the recommended way is to use symbols. That way it will never clobber anything in your namespace. It won't have unexpected behavior. It has this nice syntax for creating multiple symbols. next. Actually, let me go back and look at this printing. There are no exercises for this, so I'm just going to run through. Uh, has anybody completed the Avalif exercise? Okay. You guys are faster than everyone else. <laughs> well, uh, while you're working on it, let me just run through this printing stuff. So, so far, have you seen, as I've done like x plus 1, this is printing here as x plus 1, just as I entered it. Uh, SymPy actually has a lot of nice, pretty printing. So if you have some really complicated expression, um, you know, over x plus 5 minus 2. You know, this is kind of hard to read like this. So. Um, the best way, the easiest way to get pretty printing is there's this function called init printing. And this will automatically give you the best printing that you can get in whatever session you're in. So now if I go back and do this expression, it doesn't work because LaTeX doesn't work in Chrome. But if I use it in Safari, um, I guess I gotta save this notebook. Okay, so now after we did a NIP printing, uh, we get this really nice LaTeX representation in the IPython notebook. So the IPython notebook will actually give you the best possible printing that you can get, which is this really pretty math jacks. Um, back here, you can see in the QT console, if you have LaTeX installed, you'll also get really pretty printing. Um, in the notebook, you'll get pretty printing. If you're in a terminal, and your terminal supports Unicode, which most modern terminals do, you'll get these really nice terminal. And if your terminal doesn't support Unicode, you can still get ASCII, which is better than, um, still better than this, if you wanna know. So let's, let's still use this expression and look at what happens in the terminal. If I can find my terminal. Okay, so here I've got uh, Unicode. And so you can see these are actually Unicode characters here. And uh, it actually works pretty well. And um, there's this function called pprint, which gives the same thing. And if you want the ASCII version, you can set use Unicode equals false, and that'll give you the ASCII version. 
And so what we've been what we've been seeing here is actually the string version. So if you just do string, the built the Python function string on an expression, or just print an expression, this is what you'll get. And these string things are designed to be copy pasteable. So if you have some expression that you're working with, like in here, and you want to copy and paste it somewhere, if you just print it, you can easily just select it or select you know part of it, like this. And copy it and paste it. And uh, one caveat is that with the with this one over two thing, so like if I have a, it doesn't it doesn't print it. It prints it in a way that if you copy and paste it, it's not going to work. So, what, one thing that actually is a good idea if you're copying and pasting is to actually use simplify and paste it into a string. That way, if you, even if you have these rational numbers, like if I have two over five, uh, five here, that'll work. If I had just pasted this directly, uh, let me do, oops, can't do one more, sorry. So if I had just copied, pasted this, I, this two over five evaluates. So if I still want the rational, it, it's like this. Um, what else is there with printing? Uh, there are a lot of nice printers. We can, you can, uh, if you want to put some, if you want to work with some SymPy expression and then put it in a LaTeX form, you can just use this LaTeX function. Let me make this bigger. And that will give you a LaTeX version of your uh, function. There's a MathML. Uh, I'm not going to do much more with this actually. So let's move on. And so actually I've already done this init printing here. So I'm just going to leave it enabled. So from now on when I type something, you know, x over y, I'm going to get this really pretty output. Any questions? on that. The takeaway from that is this function, init printing. That will do what you want. How are people, has, who has completed the uh, eval if exercise? Same guys. Okay. Let me let me give you just a f uh, minute to work on the exercises, and then you. Um, then we'll move on. Just close all these. Yes. skip some of this stuff. Come back to it. Uh, we are still just on basic operations. I'm waiting for people to finish. So we, we have done so far um, 
So that if you if you go to uh, this website up here, I don't know if you can see that, uh, churtech.github.io slash scipy2013 tutorial, um, and you click on the tutorial here, the exercises correspond to the sections. And so we've done the gotcha section and we've done basic operations. And I'm about to start simplification. Yeah, I probably should put numbers on the exercises. And we're probably not going to get to all of these, but there are exercises for them if you want to go in later and learn some more. And this tutorial that's online here is actually a, oh, question? Uh, anyway, uh, what, what I was going to say is that this, uh, this tutorial on this website is actually a new tutorial I've written for SimPy itself. So um, if you go through and read this and you have any comments, please let me know because this will eventually become the official SimPy tutorial on our documentation. Um, so let's go to here. Small again. Um, <clears throat> let's copy this one. Okay, I'm going to move on now. Uh, so the next section is simplification. Um, there's a basic function in SimPy called simplify, which attempts to simplify an expression. So here I've got this expression, uh, x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 2x plus 1. And if I simplify that, this is equal to just x minus 1. And simplify can do a lot of stuff. Do uh, simplified is always getting smarter. So uh, when we do our release at the sprints that I encourage you all to come to, it'll be even better. And so, for example, so one one important thing to note about simplify simplify is that it's just it's this heuristic thing that just tries a bunch of simplifications and tries to give the best one. So say we wanted to simplify this. So if this x squared plus 2x plus 1, if you remember, this is equal to just x plus 1 quantity squared. And simplify is not doing that for us. And the reason is that simplify, the heuristic, just isn't catching that version of the simplification. It doesn't think it's simpler or something. So if we want to, a much better way to do simplification, if you know exactly what you want to do, is to use the exact simplification function that you want. So in this case, the, the, the simplification that we want is to factor this. So if we call factor, it'll factor it. And so here there are a lot of simplification functions that I'm just going to run through them. So two that we've already seen is factor, and the, the reverse of factor is expand. So expand expands things out, makes them bigger, um, which doesn't really sound like a simplification function if you're making something bigger. Usually simplification tries to make things smaller. But here, um, for example, with this expression, some, sometimes expanding things does make it smaller because things will cancel. So if you look here, 
we have x times x, we have a minus x squared, and then here from this we will have an x squared, so those cancel. And the same thing, the x terms will also cancel and we'll end up with just minus two. Um, so going back, let me just copy this and put it in Safari. Okay, the next one is called cancel. So what cancel does is it takes a rational function and it puts it into a canonical form. So if I have a rational function like this, canonical form of a rational function, polynomial divided by polynomial with no common factors. So if you have any kind of expression that's, that ultimately is just a polynomial divided by a polynomial and you want it to be exactly in that form, then you should use cancel. So like if I have one over x plus x squared divided by x plus one, and I want this in a canonical form, I can use cancel. And now this will always be some numerator divided by some denominator. And if you want to get those, there's a function called fraction. So let me call this. So once you have, once you have it in this canonical form, you can use this fraction function to get the numerator and denominator. So for example, if we had started with just this, and use fraction, it thinks that this is the numerator and this is the denominator. Because fraction is really stupid, it only just looks for something that's something divided by something. So it thinks that it's this divided by one. So if you want to, if you want to actually get it, you need to use cancel first. And it's called cancel because it, in addition to putting it uh, in a numerator over denominator, it also cancels common terms. So like, if we go, uh, this is a tuple. Yeah, the printing. Yeah, so I can do like numer equals fraction. And I can do stuff with that now. And now I can, I can do that. And we can see this is equal to the same thing. Yeah, the next, the next version of SymPy is not going to print true in LaTeX anymore. <laughs> that bug has been fixed. <laughs> so I think cancel is important for one of the exercises. If you open the uh, simplification exercises now. And this first section you should be able to do. So this first section here um, is just trying to figure out what's, what simplifications you need to apply to the expression to get from here to here or from here to here. And uh, did I actually show enough to do this one? Okay, so you can't do the exercise yet because I didn't show you <laughs> what you need to do it, which is this one, which kind of gives it away. <laughs> but that's okay, we're still learning. So here's an expression. Um, this is a polynomial in X, Y, and Z. And say I want to know what this looks like just as a polynomial in X. Um, this collect, collect, what it does is it pulls out the coefficients so collect expression and then x, that'll pull out all the coefficients of everything in front of x, the, all the x terms. So this is the coefficient of x squared is minus z plus 2. The coefficient of x is y plus 1. And if I want to actually get, oops, if I want to actually get at that coefficient, I can use this coef. So coef x two will give me the coefficient of x squared x squared. 
And so you can see using collect and coef, um, actually, you can you can get a easily manipulate these expressions and get at the part that you want. And another thing to know about collect is that you need to expand first. So if I have, uh, say, so collect. Collect is, a, is just going to work on the expression as it is. So if you want, if you actually want to get it as a polynomial, you should expand it first. Well, that's because there's nothing in there, though. Um, say, well, that was a bad example because that didn't do anything. So, I mean, that doesn't. That doesn't really put x squared term, y, x term, like we might want. So if we expand this first and then do collect, it'll do what we want. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it doesn't do like addition. I'm pretty sure. So let's let's define this expression again. So you want to know like if I want to collect out. Oh, so the question is if we can do something like collect x plus one and if we'll try to factor that out. And the answer is no. But it doesn't have to be just a symbol. So if I have like e to the x times y plus e to the x plus 4, you can do it on any, any kind of expression. It doesn't, wor it doesn't work with addition. Is the thing. It's not. It's not going to intelligently try to rearrange things and complete the square or whatever it needs to do. That, that, I'm not sure if that's implemented, but you can be any expression. That actually might be something that would be worth implementing, though. If you want to give it a shot or open an issue in our issue tracker. And the final, the final one is partial fraction decomposition, which, uh, let's see if this Wikipedia page is useful. Mm. Well, partial fraction decomposition is going to, um, if you have some rational function apart, is going to write it as a sum of terms where the denominators are, uh, uh, what is the condition on it? <laughs> right. Yeah, they, well, they should be, they should be, they'll be lower degree. They're not going to be linear or quadratic unless you, uh, unless they actually factor over the rationals. But the denominators will be irreducible. So a part, a part is sometimes useful, um, depending on what you're doing. We'll see maybe an, ex an example later where we use a part. So you should be able to do these first two exercises. They might be kind of tricky. Maybe not. So simplify, what it does, it, it tries a bunch of different simplification functions, and then it uses this, uh, this metric to see which functions are bigger or smaller, and it returns the one that it thinks is the smallest. 
And so, I mean, we can see what simplify does. Doesn't it factors out an x here? That's it. So simplify. Um, if you if you don't know anything at all about your expression ahead of time, or if you just want to see if it works, simplify works pretty well. Um, you know, it, it'll try everything that it knows. Yeah, it, it can it can be uh, there can be issues with that actually. Some it can be slow. Yeah. Certain things. Simplify would mention that it's great for like interactive usage if you really don't know anything and you want to just try something and see how it looks like. But in scripts or programs where you actually require that it finishes that it does one thing robustly, then I would discourage to simplify and instead use the exact simplification that you need. For example, cancel or apart or um, because so then, then it's robust and it's just one logarithm and it will finish, it will do what you want typically. So, so the nice thing about these, these specific functions like cancel, for example, up here, we know that cancel is always going to return a numerator over a denominator. So if I want to, if that means that cancel is always going to be something that I can put into fraction here and I'll get something useful out. I'll get a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So certain simplification functions have these uh, invariants that they'll always satisfy. So for example, factor, factor has, satisfies the invariant that it'll always, um, factor will always return irreducible polynomials. So any, any polynomial that's a factor when returned by factor is guaranteed to be irreducible. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. So for factor, there's a function called factor list. So here's here's the output of factor for this function. And if if you want to get at this so that you can actually do something with it, there's a function called factor list. Uh, let me put something in here. Oops. So factor list, oh, well, that's no longer factored out. I need to do make this an eight. Okay, so what factor list does? This is a tuple. The first term is the is the uh, rational coefficient, and then after that, there's a list of factors. So, z to the power of one, x plus two y to the power of two, and uh, like if there's another. See what happens if there's another factor of the power of one here. And it'll, you know, if there's more than one power of one, there'll be multiple of them. Like here. Yes, we will hopefully get to that. This is uh, solve. Well, I can just show you it. That's supposed to be uh, I. Let me make that so it doesn't. Well, that didn't change it. Is there a list of all the simplification methods somewhere? Yeah. Um, yeah, it should be in our docs. Just, yeah, just do. I don't know if. So in our Python, we I guess we didn't show it, but if you type a question mark and then I think evaluate the cell, then it pops out pops out a documentation. Right, and but that so doesn't have a. Yeah, and so that that doesn't have a list in there. Sh sure. Oh, okay. Well, it has it has some, so it has like some ideas, you know. So I think in our docs we we have a. F hopefully, we can access our docs. Hold on. Let me let me answer this question. I'll so here. In our docs, here's a pretty extensive list in the simplify section of our docs. Question? Uh, I guess what I was saying is sometimes you see a pattern and you'll say, like, oh, okay, so I have two exponentials multiplying each other and 
Oh, yes, there is pattern matching. Well, let me just show you how to do pattern matching. It's not in the tutorial, but since it's... If you, if you want to know how to do something, just tell me, and I'll tell you how to do it, or if, if it's possible. So the way you do pattern matching in SimPy is you... Um, so let's create an expression. So you're saying you have, like, some exponentials, you know, times, say... So let's say that this is our expression. And we want to get, we want to know what this thing is here multiplying the x and the exponential. So what we would do here is create a, what is called a wild symbol. And we create a pattern. So we know that we want something that looks like e to the x, and we want to know what's multiplying the x, so we're going to put our wild symbol there, times sine x plus 1. And it's important with these wilds that you add this excludes parameter. So we don't want this a to match x. We just want it to match anything that doesn't contain x. So let's, um, did I type this wrong? Unhashable type list. That's not helpful. Ah, that's why. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Andre. So now my expression match pattern, and we see a is y. Uh, well, let's see what would happen if we hadn't done this exclude parameter. Oh, it still works. So that's, so now, you know, if I replace this y with, you know, something else, like y plus 1, and you can have multiple wild symbols in, in an expression at once. So yeah, if you want to, if you, if you know what form your expression looks like and you want to pattern match against it, this is how you do that. And, um, but just to show you, I think I actually had something about match in here. Where would it be? Yeah, no, I, I don't know what happened to it. So um, that's a good example. So let's say Can you try to match two different wild characters or three? Right. Um, so now let's say we want to do Let's, let's try to match against A times B plus 1. Okay, well that worked. I was trying to get something that didn't work. Oh, I know where it was. <laughs> Yeah, I never actually made this into the, uh, it's never actually made it into the tutorial. Okay, so let's say we want to match against this pattern. So 
I want to know if, if two, X, 2 plus 3y matches the pattern a times x plus b times y. And according to this, it does because a just equals 2 over x. So that's probably not what we wanted. So if we add exclude x, y to each of these, that'll prevent these, pat these wild things from matching something that is in, contains x or y. And now we see this returns none because it doesn't match. Was there a better example here? Okay, question? Yeah, I, I guess I was, is there, a, is there a sort of a simple way to say if, if, if it matches if this pattern and this, if this match is substituted with another expression? So I, I was thinking specifically in the context of the third example on the simplification. So instead of finding out what is the correct sort of simplification function call, uh, if, if Oh, you want to know more generally, like what form an expression is? Okay, yeah, there are, well, there are a few. I mean, there is like, for example, there is like is polynomial and is rational function. So if you have a sum of all, if you have like a rational expression and an irrational expression, we give you a, 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 you know, basically, you're breaking down for each component, what would it give you? Uh, no, there isn't anything like that written. It's, it would be, um, not too difficult to write something like that. I think there was actually an issue open once where somebody had some little script that did that. Uh, if we, I don't know if we're going to get to it today, but this section on this section at the very end, the advanced expression manipulation, tells you how you can dig down into expressions and really easily write up a function like that. Um, it's so it's ten o'clock. So okay. Uh, how long is the break for 20 minutes? So 20 minutes, is that okay with you guys? Okay. okay.